This is Patrick from WSOU 89.5 FM, the loudest rock. I'm here with Max Cavalera today talking about Go Ahead and Die. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Doing really good. So uh, this new album you have out right now, it's your sophomore album. It's called uh, Unhealthy Mechanisms. Now, this album, it's very dystopian, a lot, much like a lot of the stuff you've done in your various projects. So um, songs on this album, they're titled things like Desert Carnage, Tumors, Most Dangerous Animal, No Easy Way Out. What in the world around you inspires to come up with really dark themes and song titles like this? Well, pretty much the whole uh, the whole scheme of the of the record, um, the subjects was pretty much came from my son, Igor uh, mind. You know, he was like, he's the one that told me he'd be cool to make a record about um mostly about me mental health and how deep and dark that subject is. It's not really tackle a lot in uh, in any form of music, not not metal, but most people I think prefers to ignore or don't touch this kind of like a taboo um, subject. And we thought it was kind of cool to, as a society in general, point the finger at, at things that affect all of us and that that this theme is so universal you you know you can be from brazil america europe mental health affects everybody it's something that everybody can you know identify with so most of the tracks are dealing with that and then there's a couple other ones that were a bit the go ahead and die style uh of things like tumors kind of like about trolls on the internet and uh, of course, Drug -O Cop being like one of the craziest, most off songs of the album, musically and lyrically. Musically is a bit like surf punk, like Dead Kennedys meets Nail Bomb, which is to me really cool, really fun. It's one of, one of, one of the most fun songs we did on the record. And then you have stuff like Chasm that's like really HP Lovecraft influence. Um, and then, uh, most dangerous animal, of course, it's a serial killer reference from, uh, the Zodiac killer. And, uh, so we, the all hard themes, the, the all hard, dark subjects that go great with the music because the music is so visceral. It's so brutal. It's savage, you know? So you got to sing about stuff that matches the music. So I think the, all the topics really match. And I love the, the final track, Unhealthy Mechanism which deals with, um, I guess, people trying to find the solution, to try to find a solution for a better life in uh, chemicals, you know? Um, and then how the whole thing evolved, like the doctors being puppet masters and filling you up with addictive medicines. They're actually killing you instead of saving you. So that's, that song is really hard. It, it hits super hard. And I love playing that one live. You know, it's like one of my favorite tracks. There's a part on the song that I even I joke with people. I say, I, I need to, to write down um, a statement that I'm not responsible for my actions when this part of the song is played live. You know, <laughs> I am not responsible for whatever goes down on this part of the song. Like, it's, I'm just going to lose my mind every night. And I kind of, kind of pretty much do, man. Um, so yeah, I I love the topics on the record, and I love that Igor was the main um, thinker of the whole record. That's really really cool. Yeah, and I saw you guys say in an interview how uh, Igor he uh, he's a big fan of books, an avid reader, an avid fan of literature, and how um, he even said that when you guys are writing lyrics, a lot of times he'll go to you and say maybe rewrite that or maybe go back to the drawing board. As someone who's been writing metal lyrics for over 40 years now. Uh, I'm curious, what, what do you think Igor might have said about a song like Roots Bloody Roots or these iconic songs that... You yeah, <laughs> it probably would have been like, I I don't know about that line on, on Roots, you know, you have to change it, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I love that about him because he's not a yes man, you know, and like, it's, so it's working with somebody that actually voices his opinion. And no matter how, how you know, how great you think you are in your mind you're always learning man you know there's a, and i'm a i'm a i, I i'm not <clears throat> i can't get a big head even if i try because i have people around me that 
keeps me grounded, so grounded that uh, there's zero chance of me end up being a rock star. So I end up that really humbles me to the point where I I'm I'm really I'm I'm all game for all of that. So when we go to the studio and he's like fixing my lyrics and telling me, no, nah, that's not you can come up with something better than that. And I'll be like, yeah, maybe I can. And I go back to the drawing board and try again. And I think that uh, suggests that, that you didn't settle for the first thing, the easy thing. You kind of tried the hard way. And I think the final result is cooler because of that. And uh, yeah, man, I think that's uh, it, it, the same goes for the tour. I think like, this tour to me, this part, this age of my career, to go back to the trenches, man, and uh, it's 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 a crazy, awesome, humbling experience that I'm like enjoying it every second of it because it's real small shows and you are one on one with your audience, and a lot of times, so fly, we kind of lost that and. Definitely with Cavalera playing those Sepultura albums. Those are big venues, 2,000 people, 3,000 people. The big festivals don't have that. All that I'm experiencing on this tour is all trenches. It's killer. It's phenomenal every night. I love every second of it. And you got to have that really road warrior mentality to get and do what I'm doing right now. At this, at my age, most people be like, uh uh, no, I'm not doing that, man. You're crazy. Uh and I'm totally the opposite. I'm I'm like I'm liking this more than a big tour, man. It's crazy. It's, it's incredible. Like really, really feeding off every single person that's been at the shows. And it's a it's a an a humbling, amazing, almost like life changing experience, to be fair, on this tour is happening. It's crazy. Yeah, and I, I heard you say in another interview that you described your kids as being born on tour because you were touring so much early on in their lives. Um, for Igor, how do you think being raised on the road with you guys uh, impacts his performance on stage and on the tour? Like, like is it does it come naturally? Is it a little more effort? What's the dynamic like? Well, yeah, I mean, they they really, really were born on tour. We were a real unique fam metal family that really kind of, just kind of roll with it from the beginning. I, I when I married Gloria and I joke with her. I say we we are starting our own tribe, and, and we did. And it was really like the we didn't really want to leave them at home. Uh, well, so when they were real little, like you know, two years old, one one year, two year old, they'll come on tour with us, and a lot of times they'll be you know things like you know they'll be sleeping on guitar cases with like the Aussie singing in the background you know like and they're like sleeping on uh Aussie Aussie's guitar cases and all the crew really love them and um I'm I'm so jealous of them because they got to meet everybody they met the Ramones they met Metallica they met Ozzy you know like a young Max if you know he's like he met, they met everybody I want to meet <laughs> And when you when they were like four years old, man, you know, uh, I think that kind of like really um, made them really be comfortable with this lifestyle. First of all, so Igor on tour is very comfortable. Both of them, Igor and Zion, they love the they know about also the ethics and what you do, what you don't do on the road, and that all that. So that's that's all great because they. Uh, Having somebody that's green that's never been on tour and you gotta explain everything to them is hard. So we don't have to do that with them. They know everything. They know the the don'ts and the do and don'ts of tour, and uh, it's great. And I love that I get to spend time with both of them in two different bands with Igor with Go Ahead and Die and Zion with Soulfly. And I experiment with, with both of them in in many different ways because they're both very different kids as well, you know. Um, so all that's really cool. I think they, I mean, that, that lifestyle really prepared them for this career. And a lot of people have seen Igor, man, on this tour and they're really, they're loving it, man. They're calling him like, 
you know, the f- future metal god. Like I told you, like, don't let it go to your head, man. You know? <laughs> but yeah, they he's killer, man. He actually he reminds me a little bit of a young skinny Max. Uh, you know, an angry young little Max. So having both of us on the stage is it's it's quite quite something cool to see. Um some people have commented on this tour, they they see me live and they feel that I, 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 I'm passing a, a kind of energy like I feel younger on the stage because of, of the situation. And I do. I feel in a weird way, I feel like uh, I'm I'm a teenager again. I get and I get to do this with my son, which is incredible. Um but it's it's a it's a yeah, it's a harsh set, man. It's it's a song after another, no stop, no breaks. The tour barely has any days off. This is grinding. This is road work, you know, so it's really cool. Yeah, and going back to uh, the album, which is out now, Unhealthy Mechanisms, I read that it was a very raw style of recording. You did as little vocal takes as you could. I remember I read Igor said that he played his guitar right in front of the amp with the gain all the way up to try to get feedback. How does recording uh, really raw like that in an age where you can be polished uh, kind of help you creatively impact the sound of the record? So, yeah, so we were more thinking about the bands that we dig and how how they record their records. And I thought of it and I thought of, 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 of stuff like, you know, uh, um, trying to imagine how Discharge recorded their first recordings. I really think, even though I wasn't there, I really think it was as raw as it gets, like that. Like as m- not many vocal takes. Like just go and just go for it, and you do one take, and even if it's not perfect, it's raw, and you feel it. And so it's more about the performance and the the brutality of the deliverance than perfectionism. We're not we're not striving for perfectionism here. That's not part of the deal. You know, this is not rush. So we're like. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of like a, like a mixed mentality of old school black metal, old school hardcore and how really cool how those are actually real similar in their, uh, primordial roots or uh, old school hardcore and black metal really, uh, it really connects in that level. And I think that's what we try to do with the record. And then we had on top of it. We have uh, Arthur is uh, mixing, which is great. Arthur is a, is a wizard of sound. Everything he touches, I love all the stuff he did. The last thing I heard from him was Last Cross. And I'm floored how brutal it is and how great it sounds. And and Arthur is a wizard in a studio. And uh, it's great because he, he can make you sound raw, but you still sound good, you know? So it doesn't sound like you sound great. But it's still raw as hell, man. And uh, and I love all the little effects that he put in. Like that stuff that um, we just let him do that. He's on his own. We don't really say anything. And he added like a bunch of stuff from movies and like that between songs. Mostly on Most Dangerous Animal. I think it's from Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. And uh, that came out really awesome. I love it. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I think that. The rawness comes from that mentality, you know, of making the the record. Um, almost on, I don't say, but raw, on purpose. You know, you don't want to polish here. You don't want the things to sound great. They need to sound. Uh, they have to actually have grit. Uh, so that's like what we went for, and I think it sounds cool like that. Absolutely. And I do have to ask, I read that at a certain point in your career, you were using four strings on your guitar because, like you said, the limitations kind of helped you creatively. Are you still doing that on this record or no? So this is the only band I play six strings on because I, okay. I do solos. I, I've been doing a lot of really uh, Tom Warrior influence kind of solos, Kerry King Slayer, Old Slayer solos, like a lot of whammies. Um, they're different every night, which is great. I, I I don't really, I mean, I practice them, but on purpose, I want them to sound different. So I'm hitting different notes every night. <laughs> so, so it's quite a unique um, experience, but I still do play four strings, you know, especially if I do every, all the other projects I have, you know, uh, Cavalera, Soulfly, Killer Be Kill. 
that forces me to be creative with four strings. And that's the point I was making about four strings that I, I, I am more of a riff maker that I, I, I have four strings only to use. So I have to make the best out of those four strings. Um, but we go ahead and I came the idea of doing leads. Igor didn't want to do any leads. So I, I always been a fan of the, uh, of the Tom warrior, Kerry King so solos. They're all crazy and, and a little bit of a piggy from Voivod. So it's all that influenced by all that. So it's kind of crazy every night. A lot of dive bombs and noisy. It's fun, man. It's, it's, you know, I don't get to do that on any other band. So this is a, a lot of cool stuff I get to do on Go Ahead and Die. And uh, you guys are playing Dingbats February 9th in Clifton, New Jersey and St. Vitus in Brooklyn February 10th. What can we expect from a Go Ahead and Die live show on this tour? Man, it's it's uh like I said, it's 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 strange, you know. It's like it feels like man, like perfect music, like almost like fight music, you know. Like I think fighters should use go ahead and die before they go, they walk out. Like UFC fighters, should, if they listen to that, I think they'll 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 kick more than normal. Um, but yeah, it's all about savagery, just giving zero. Um really really the spirit of metal you know kind of like what i like about the the go ahead and die show uh compared to other bands that i've been through is that we bring that element of danger back to metal it's like metal is dangerous again anything can like we might have a bleeding uh a bloody nose tonight you know like it, it can happen so it's got that little edge of it's dangerous again, like it was in the beginning. The early Sepultura shows feel like this. Um, and that's what I love about it. And, you know, it's an atmosphere that, because you, if, if you do this for long enough, it does become safe and robotic. You know, there's not nothing you can help. It just, it just goes that way. And it becomes routine. And it becomes every night, it's a safe environment. And I kind of hated that, man. I always wanted, like, what happened to go to the show and be scared for your life? It's too much, but kind of, you know, <laughs> like, like feel a little danger. That danger element is in the air. And I love that about that. So expect that and brutality, like nonstop punishing riffs, man, one after the other through the whole night. We don't stop. Like, we just play. It's like the Ramones of, of, of metal. That's what it feels like. Song after song, we don't talk much. Um, we let the songs do the talking, and it's, it's great. I, I love the energy that we bring. It's it's, it's like uh, like a punk mentality mixed with metal, it's, which feels really, really cool. Heck yeah, man. So Unhealthy Mechanisms by Go Ahead and Die is out now, coming to Dingbats February 9th and St. Vitus February 10th. Max, is there anything else you want to add today? No, I want to just thank all the fans that came uh, on this tour. It's been amazing, man. Like I said, one of my favorite tours i ever done. Uh, and come early, check out the early, uh, the opening bands. There's been some kick opening bands. And of course, Body Box is our main uh, support. They're kicking out every night. So come early, check out, get ready to be brutalized. Because that's what, in, we're in the business of brutalizing people um but yeah thank you man thank you guys for always supporting uh everything i do i appreciate you absolutely we're happy to thank you so much max this is patrick wso 89.5 awesome